visit this bailout and invalidate it in the name of, of protecting true capitalism. Never give up, never forget what went wrong and at whose hands. Slick Willie getting rid of the Glass-Steagall Act, allowing the banksters to go wild west on our ass and dump all that money on the housing market, causing a chain reaction of inflation, inflation, currency debasement, misery, just abounding misery, wealth and income disparity soaring, poverty just just exploding. I mean, it's just a, this is what Slick Willie did, the bailout did. Sometimes people whom endorse fiscally conservative principles profess Christianity, go to church on Sunday, and then to the city council meetings to persecute the poor, the indigent, the least of men, that is Jesus Christ, on uh, Monday. These types must make God want to hurl. I know they make me want to throw up. Actually, these are the types that make me want to have explosive diarrhea. Taking advantage of our God-given free speech right is an imperative in maintaining any semblance of freedom. Taking our God-given right to free speech for granted ensures we will lose every semblance of freedom. Take advantage of free speech. Use it or lose it, folks. You are either helping to heal our social divide or you are hampering the healing. Yeah, I'll say that again. You are either helping to heal our social divide or you are hampering the healing. There's no in-between, okay? You don't get to opt out. You're stuck on one side of this issue or the other, okay? Period. End of story. So you need to think long and hard about which side you're on, okay? Because the ones that are, that are hampering the healing... They're on the highway to hell. They're on the ship of fools. They're on this bandwagon telling you, hey, this is, we're just going to be divided. This just is a state of affairs in perpetuity. Get used to it. Capitulate to it and prescribe to it. Divide, divide, divide. You're never going to see eye to eye with the socialists, say the capitalists. And then, and, and, and then the Democrats will say, you're never going to see eye to eye with the Republicans. The Republicans will say the same thing. Do you understand? And on and on, the liberals and the conservatives, oh, no, this is hopeless. This is, you know, never talking about all the things we have in common. How the fact, the fact that we've got a vastly more in common than out of common, just as human beings. It, 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 see, they don't want you to think for yourself and just say, well, yeah, that makes sense. That's logical. That's reasonable. That's not radical. Uh, God's will isn't radical. It's radical to prescribe to the satanic will of these monsters, these evil human monsters, man, whose fruits stink to high heaven. God, they're a miserable bunch. And they, like I said, it's a deep, deep well. It goes all the way to hell of misery for these people. So that's where they want to drag you and I. Okay? So please, folks, please help to heal the divide in our land. Please. Do everything. God, ask God what you could do. The attitude you should have. The spirit you should have. How you should think. You know, what, what thoughts you harbor in your heart and mind, the thoughts you cultivate in your heart and mind. And so that'll, that'll control the words that come out of your mouth because these are the things that can either heal or kill is what we say, what we believe, what we think, how we behave, okay, is secondary. It all starts, you know, invisibly. Those very invisible qualities are very real, just like gravity and usually electricity unless it's lightning or something or sparks, just like the, the air we breathe, very powerful, invisible forces. But that's what we are. Our soul is, is real, man. We're, we are eternal beings. Even the wicked. I mean, it talks about their destruction, but that means they get to go hang out with each other in a very miserable place. Okay? That you don't want to be there. I, I sure as hell don't want to be there. That's why I am an egalitarian. That's why I am an idealist. That's why I want the best for you and your family, and I don't care who I'm talking to. I want the best for everybody. Even the evildoers just got to stop being evil. <coughs> Excuse me. God, I no more want to use violence on another human being than I want violence used upon myself. We've all heard it asked, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? To this I say, good question. And then I would ask, what would a man give in exchange for his ability to imagine? 
Simply the power to think. Yeah, what would you trade for that, my friends? I wouldn't trade anything. If you enjoy, even demand your dignity, you must allow others, all others, to enjoy and even demand their own dignity. To preserve any semblance of the, quote, American way of life, we must view free speech not only as a right, but as a duty, an obligation, a responsibility. That's right, free speech. I mean, can I overemphasize the critical nature of preserving free speech in America? It's not only a right, but it's a duty. We have a duty to speak our minds. Humans are acutely stressed out by design. Fear, even terror, has been artificially concocted and thrust upon us by evil-doing control freaks. This is done in order to maintain control over our species, to keep us compliant with the whims of the top evil-doing elitists running the show, running our paradigm, our reality. Sometimes we human beings would like to be carried away on a pink cloud chariot to a place of love, comfort, peace, joy, safety, security, freedom, and happiness. Other times we would like to heal the world, to, lo to, to love, comfort, give peace, joy, safety, security, freedom, and happiness to others, and we would be willing to give wholly of ourselves to do so, even to the point of death as martyrs. We can all be very grateful that God knows how tough it is to be human. Yeah, this, you know, this points to the dichotomy, the, 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 the tremendous, profound paradox we all have to contend with day in and day out. It is tough being human. Yeah, we want to run, not walk. We want to beam me up, Scotty, please, right now. You know, we, like the Three Dog Night song, I will waltz off this theater. Let me out, let me out. You know, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, we all feel that. Slash our wrists metaphorically. Escape, run, hide. And other times we want to get in the battle and fight the good fight and say, no, I've got to do this. I've, even if it means I'm a martyr and people hate me, I've got to do something to make this a better world or else I'm going to be held accountable for what I didn't do. And understanding the concept of a frame-up or false flag operation, we need to ask ourselves certain questions. Among those questions, suppose it was discovered that 60% of those professing to be Christians or Muslims or Jews did not fit the criteria, the definition of what it means to be a true Christian, Muslim, or Jew. The big question becomes then, how would knowing such profound facts affect our paradigm? That, you know, the majority of these people that profess to be Christians, Muslims, or Jews actually did not fit the criteria or the definition, the true definition. How would that affect our paradigm? And when we realize that, would we finally understand the imperative in having a meeting of the minds in communica communicating what exactly the de definition of words is? And when we sit down to have a conversation, discourse with somebody, we've got to decide what the hell we're talking about, you know, precisely how we're using the words, what it means to you, or else we're not going to have an effective conversation. It's a Babylon effect. You're, you're, you, one guy says government, this guy's got this idea in his head, this guy's got this idea, they have a conversation, they go to fisty cuffs, metaphorically speaking, with their words, and uh, things just get worse. We get more divided. So you've got to have a meeting in the minds about what are you talking about? What, how are you using this word? Okay, that's so important. What is the truth? I mean, it, all the people in the world could call themselves something. It doesn't mean it's true. They're just words that people use. The proof is in the pudding. So what is the definition? You know, what's the criteria for meeting the, you know, the true Jew, true Christian, true Muslim, according to, you know, their own wise books? One day at a time, we are who we choose to be. Are we not? If you've ever, if you're ever curious regarding exactly what things a man, a human, will do in order to attain money, in order to survive, and you decide to make a list of those things, do yourself a favor. Make a list of those things a human will not do in order to survive. It would be a far shorter list. 
not much a man or woman wouldn't do to, in order to survive. Understanding exactly how minuscule a critical mass can be is critical in healing the division in our land. And I think I went into that in depth earlier. The truth is that we can handle the truth. That, that realization alone tells us that we've been lied to deliberately under the pretense of saving us from the truth. I ask, is this the paradigm we want? One we signed up for? How different would our paradigm, our reality be, if we simply had the truth?